preparation like mm -hmm. you know coming off of something that was, was significant but then wanting to make sure you're good down the stretch um yeah just in terms of like getting practice in or your physical health oh yeah yeah no i mean just more football the better you know um it's tough not being able to do that it's like the one thing you can't do in rehab is play football so i'm going to be out here getting good reps against guys and um, you know being able to compete a little bit does it feel like you can do a little bit i mean i know you were ready to mm -hmm. return in the last game but does it feel with a game under your belt that you yeah, I, yeah there's like a, a certain level of confidence of coming back and be like hey i haven't been able to do this in a few weeks and you know last week got one practice in uh before that game on thursday but um yeah it feels good just more time being able to compete and play you know the confidence that goes a long way you at all? I mean, I know you guys have been communicating on timelines and stuff, but for Puka to, to be so ready to go a little bit earlier than expected and be so, you know, fired up, did that did any of that surprise you at all? Yeah, I mean, that was pretty incredible. Um, coming off of legit, you know, one practice and doing that, like, that's, that's not an easy thing. I mean, people underestimate, I think, how difficult it is to be out as long as he was, not being able to compete, and then come back and play the way he did. That's pretty special. So um, that was a obviously, you know, kudos to him and you know the kind of player that he is and um, how he can prepare mentally in a you know in a very you know mental week of preparation um, and then get what he needs to in that one day of practice and go out there and play like he did. It's pretty pretty impressive. What, what do you recall about last season? You got season opener at Seattle. You were not able mm -hmm. to play, but Puka made his debut. Mm -hmm. what, what are your recollections of watching him? Yeah, I thought it was really cool. It was a, I mean, it was a, it kind of spoke to, I think, some of the things that he had to go through during that year. But, you know, he had some ups and downs that game, too, or some plays that he wanted back. And um, but being able to respond to them um, over and over again, I just thought it was just incredible. Uh, you saw just his competes and his willingness to you know, do whatever it is that was asked of him. Um, it, was, it was really impressive. Because he, he had some drops early. And then being able to come back and it's like, hey, there was no blink from him. It was like, I'm going to keep, keep competing, keep throwing, throwing me the ball. And um, he you know, kept making some really tough catches. And um, I thought it was a really good, like, yeah, you know, foreshadowing of, of what the year was going to be. Do you remember your first, being a Washington native, do you remember your first game in Seattle? In Seattle? I do remember my first game in Seattle, yeah. Yeah, first game up there. Um, it was a good one. We beat him pretty good. Todd had that really long run, um, I think right before halftime. Uh, we were kind of just run, going to run the clock out, and he took it 60 or something like that. Um, yeah, but I do remember, I do remember playing up there. It's, it's nice. It's, it's a, you know, the air up there is different. You know, you get off the plane, it feels it, the air up there is a little different. So, um, love being back up in the Northwest. Um, but yeah. Um, is there any? The personnel is different, obviously, and they're still uploading what Mike McDonald's whole defense mm -hmm. is going to be probably over the next year or so. Are, is there any concept carryover that you're recognizing or any um, philosophical car carryover that does stand out on tape? Yeah, I think there is a little bit. I mean, um, there is an element of, hey, this is his, you know, he's calling stuff that he knows. and um, But there's also an element of playing, you got a different team, different personnel, and so there's going to be some, uh, you know, variations in that regard and playing to guys' strengths. And um, I got a lot of respect for um, him and his, you know, the way he, you know, his uh, philosophy on defense. and. Um, you know, those guys play hard, they play sound football, and uh, at the end of the day, I mean, that's, if you can get a defense to do that, you're, you're going to be in a good spot. Cooper, you knocked off your rust uh, against a very exotic uh, secondary. Uh, now that you're back, you're going to face some pretty lean secondary mm -hmm. the rest of the season. How important was it for you to just get back in game action, mm -hmm. specifically against the Vikings, to knock everything off? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is good. I mean, there's a there is an element of you know the nuance of playing the position and, and seeing different looks, seeing different patterns, um, and you know being able to see that against a, yeah a team Viking team that does a lot of different looks. There's some there's some very different stuff and very aggressive defense. Um, but then you know there's a, you got I mean being able to practice against our guys too. I mean, we, I get against practicing some really good um, DBs, some really good schemes. You know every single day and. Um, I think that's the thing that you don't want to miss. You don't want to miss out on just the day-to-day -day reps um, and knowing that there's only so many games you can play, but you know you get an opportunity to practice multiple times a week and taking advantage of those reps is just as important. Beyond just having you and, and, and Puka back, 
What did you feel like was different or was really clicking for you guys offensively last week that you know it's just throughout the unit as a whole? Yeah, well, I thought you know there was a there's an ability I think to um, to stay ahead of the sticks. I think we did a good job there overcoming um, when there were mistakes and being able to just get first down, find a way to get first downs. I think guys just competed really hard. Um, you know, I think there's a, a lot that can, you know, hustle can make up for a lot. You know, if guys are, are playing hard, playing fast, um, even when, you know, technique might get out of order, you know, something's not right. If you if you run hard, good things will happen. So, um, you know, it's a defensive philosophy. Good things happen to those who run. And I think offensively we can kind of, you know, take that, that attitude as well. And um, I think that showed up multiple times in that game. In addition to your route running, one of the things that makes you elite um, is your ability to think things through. Uh, while you were sidelined with your injury, how, how did how did you see the game mm-hmm. evolve? Yeah, well, I think there is. A, I tried to stay as engaged as possible. Um, I think that's a, a huge thing, being in meetings and being able to see defenses, even though you aren't seeing it in person through your own lens um, on the field, but being able to see things and just say, hey, how would I run this? And being able to also just be engaged with the guys, like, hey, can I offer anything of use to the guys that are out there playing the game? Um, that goes a long way. And so when it does come back to you know playing the game and you're, you know, lining up against these guys that you have a plan, you got an idea of what you're seeing and how you want to run your routes and um, being able to react and and, and uh, act accordingly. So you spent a lot of time guys rehabbing alongside mm-hmm. Cooper. What what type of things did mm-hmm. he, he grasp in terms of just like your eventual approach or, you know, just returning that mm-hmm. you saw him implement against the Vikings? Yeah, well, I think uh, I, I don't know if it, it's not so much me. It's just you know, it's the, the it's who Puka is. I mean, his uh, focus and his um, ability to be present and where wherever his feet are um, that goes a long way. Just being able to be in that in that uh, being in that treatment room as long as he was, as long as I was, um, it can get monotonous. And you know, when you, things get monotonous, things tend to get complacent. And uh, he did a good job of being able to you know fight through the monotony and say, hey, look, there's there's you know, things that can be found here, things that I can do, even though this feels, you know, repetitive, um, this is how I'm going to get better. And I think he did a great job of just being present through that. Cooper, um, at times last year, Puka, he, he would get overcome before games. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, no, it's throwing up. <laughs> and working, he keep working through a bunch of different things. Mm-hmm. Um, aside from that part of it, how, how have you watched him go into that mental space, but in like a healthy way? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think there's there's something about being able to con- like you, you, I don't want to refer to Puka and my six year old exactly, <laughs> but like you, know, you, you teach your kids that emotions aren't a bad thing. Right? You want to be able to have, feel your emotions and be able to take that and allow them to fuel you, but you don't want to you don't want to make rash decisions based off of your emotions, right? And there's th- th- certain things when your emotions get going too much, you know, Puka, you can't you can't scream eight times. And then come out because you can't breathe. And we got, we need you to. Like, we will take the, we will take Puka on third down, versus the eight screams after the second down play, right? So like, you know, control some of that stuff. And say, hey, look, I can take this, allow it to, you know, express itself in how I'm playing, but also not take away from, you know, being able to be out in the field, take away from your ability to play the game how you want to play it. So um, he's done a great job in that regard. Mm. Perfect. Thank you, guys.